Attention bargain hunters and savvy savers. From fashion to furniture, leisure to luxury, and a wide range of household goods and tech from the biggest names in retail. Don't miss John Pie's online auctions. View, bid, buy. It's as easy as pie. I think the challenge is, after coming back after COVID, were obviously the... Uh, the time off, you know, 18 months away from the game is a is a tremendous amount of time, and I know the players were really proactive in uh, gym sessions and uh, training and you know all that sort of stuff. But uh, I think coming back in, um, honestly, there was probably a little bit of anxiety around. You know, some of the players felt quite anxious coming in, being back in that group environment, um, and I thought they handled that really well. Uh, the way we managed it was we came back on a voluntary basis. Um, I think for about six weeks, if I'm I'm right four to six weeks we did a, a quite voluntary once a week uh, which was some fun stuff uh, some condition games some skills and then we sort of built that up from uh, from once a week to twice a week and then went back to compulsory training eventually three times a week so I think um, we took a lot of advice from um, people outside of the game and the best way to approach it and I think we pretty much got it right um, in terms of the, 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 the way it was structured and uh, we, yeah, yeah I just, I, that's the way we came back and I think I think the players enjoyed coming back, uh, being drip fed in. Definitely our break throughout lockdown. Um, it probably gave me time to concentrate on my, my PGC, um, concentrate on other avenues apart from rugby, but then also still you know, training down the sand dunes, training down the fields, the track, uh, training with my friends throughout lockdown as well. So it was a refreshing break and I think it has helped me long term while coming back to Aberavon as I feel fresh and ready to go for uh, a few more seasons. I uh, rejoined Aberavon in, in late August, early September before the, before the season just started. You know, having finished you know, during the, 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 the pandemic for a number of reasons, but um, nevertheless, Jason gave me a call to ask whether or not I would um, re rejoin the club. And um, after some careful consideration, you know, I, I, I agreed that it was a, a good decision, and I'm obviously very pleased to be to be back. So the players had, you know, had, had clearly been off for a, an, an extended period and an unexpected period during um, during COVID. Um, you know, as part of that, they had you know lots of downtime, and their bodies had, had, had a chance to, to readapt to uh, a, a new normal. Really, for a number of them, it was you know a really difficult uh, transition, really, between um, being you know away from the rugby and, and, and getting back into it. Initially, we have had you know some injuries where we've. Um, Perhaps picked up, you know, some soft tissue injuries that we perhaps wouldn't have previously had we not had this break. But um, you know, it takes time for for the body to adapt and, and readjust. And I, I do feel like we're slowly getting back to to where we were, you know, pre-pandemic. Now that we've certainly had this first block of games and, and, and getting close to that. It was uh, September 6th. I had the operation. Uh, we're, uh, we're eight weeks post-op now, so uh, we've got two weeks left. So it's going really well. Oh, Hello. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I said it. Oh, yeah. I was, I was, oh, yeah. I was, I was your Friday. <laughs> Do you like the haircut? Yeah, I'm going to grow it long and pull out this then. In the wind. It was tough to not be part of the beginning of the season. Uh, when you're injured, it does feel, uh, as any player, feel like flipping out. You don't feel part of it at, this, at the time. But the boys are doing a fantastic job. Uh, there's so many leaders in the team. So you don't. Uh, they're just smashing it. Yeah, can't uh, can't wait to just get back, really. We did a lot of uh, uh, sort of wrestling. We did a lot of activities where the players got used to sort of taking bumps on their bodies in a controlled environment. And then we moved on to rugby, uh, rugby-based condition games, which is normally part of our pre-season and try to make them as enjoyable as possible, you know, especially with, at the back of our mind, the players have been out for so long. So it was a little bit different. No, it was a lot different, really, to a normal pre-season. But it was enjoyable, and, uh, and obviously we had the news then of the, 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 the Premiership Cup starting, so that gave us uh, some, some clear, so a clear target to work towards. Moving forward, I think um, it's especially important that we are back uh, playing. We got our Tuesday, Thursdays, and obviously back playing on Saturdays. So it does show um, us boys and the camaraderie we have as a team. I think that's very important. But I still think uh, there are areas for us to improve. 
uh, looking at our socials now, coming up at Christmas, and I just still think it's a very important time for Aberavon as a community, as a family club, for us all as boys to stick together throughout the season. Every year at Abraham, we like to have a promotional video. Uh, first and foremost, I think that's to kickstart the season. It's been a bit of a long break, three or four months break, where people haven't really been digested in, in rugby or involved in rugby. So the promo is kind of, you know, we're back, rugby's back, and just get the, the, the juices flowing, if you like, for, for the rugby. But secondary to that, it's it's the key messages that are involved in those those promotional videos that we do and we were very fortunate this year to have someone like Michael uh, in, involved in our promotional video it's obviously he's a Hollywood actor uh, from Patol but but if we break it down and, and look to the reasons why we were in, involved Michael is is quite simple um, his father Maydrek who, who's in, still involved in the club used to bring Michael down as a young boy first and foremost we are a rugby club and we, we play rugby obviously but when rugby shut down and, and the world shut down, we, we still stayed alive and we did a lot of things within that community, Christmas lights, and we helped the vulnerable out, etc. So those messages would have come out and it's kind of like, well, we are a community club, so let's stay as a community and let's get all involved and, and hopefully people will come down and support the club on a Saturday. Following on from our success last season, I think um, us as a team, we were definitely rolling and I thought we would achieve something uh, very big that year, especially with the Cup. Um, it was tough, it was tough, especially when we were back after pre after the lockdown. Um, maybe the, lot, the boys probably weren't there physically um, with the conditioning, but um, you know, it was tough. Those first couple of games, especially when we played Ebervale, at uh, at Tab Athletic Ground, um, we did find it hard to get into our defensive shape, our attacking shape, and the boys having those little micro chats along um, along the way as well. But definitely those those games under our belt, uh, moving on into the season now, we can really see all the hard work that all us boys have put in throughout. I think it's obvious the way we like to play our rugby in Aberavon. Abba. We like to play free flowing expansive rugby, we like to play high ball in play time. One of the areas we looked at uh, pre-Covid, if you like, was we felt that we tended to overplay a little bit, and especially between a halfway line and our own 10 metre line. So we more or less play eight, nine, 10 phases and sometimes end on a negative, especially when maybe the opposition weren't committing to rucks or um, we failed to make gain line. So one of the things we've looked at and we're still working on is, you know, in, introducing our kicking game and using that as an attacking option. So we've got a number of kicking options where we can put pressure back on the opposition, kick long, put it up in the air, uh, chips, you know, whichever, whichever one is, it needs to be executed at the time. We're very fortunate that we have um, that the supporters that we do have. Uh, they're here every single week, home and away, and, and that's absolutely amazing. But we are obviously still searching for new supporters, new people who want to come and watch, watch the club. And, and how we do that is really through our communication strategies. So that's obviously social media, etc. But it's more how we can bring the players to, to light and their characters. People who come to watch the games obviously see players in this persona that they have on the field, so that they could be hard hitting aggressive style of players and those char character traits don't necessarily uh, reflect in their true character traits off, off the field. So going back to marketing, it's, it's important for us to highlight and really showcase those people through the camera and hopefully we can flip it so people would see those type of players that are involved, those type of people involved at the club and they may come down just to see what they're all about. So uh, we've had a few a few boys take the reins while boys have either been injured or uh, just uh, having a rest from uh, from the period of rugby we're playing. Uh, I think Will Price just for his just for his his presence. I think if you've played with Will, you know what the presence is, and he doesn't say many words, but flipping neck, you just know he's there. He's, he leads from the front, and uh, he's a very experienced player, and uh, boys respect him so highly. 
and that's not that's not nothing to do with the other boys being captain really they they they're all, all high in their own standards but uh, will price is your man our challenge as coaches was we didn't want to get hung up on on winning every game uh, we wanted to stick to our sort of philosophy of development and everyone's got to enjoy themselves and i think we've achieved that we've made uh, apart from the first two games, which quite understandably, after so long out, we kept a very, um, uh, we, we selected uh, uh, pretty much the same side. Um, but since then, we've we've made lots of changes uh, going into the games. We've blooded uh, some real young, exciting talent. Dan Edwards came in for his first game against Kamal and Quinns and was outstanding at man of the match. We've given an opportunity to Lewis Marsh. Uh, Rodri Lewis came in against against Swansea for his um, for uh, to, to, to make it the youngest player to represent Aberavon since semi-pro. That's really exciting, 17 years and two months. It's an exceptional uh, achievement for, for Rodri and his family. And um, he's fitted in really well. So, yeah, we've, we've sort of kept the balance between moving forward as a team, looking at our players and helping to develop. But with, at the back of our minds as well, we're in a cup competition and it's very important that we, we, we win games.